Welcome to Inside the Vandals, a weekly show covering University of Idaho football and the Vandals in action. Inside the Vandals is brought to you by the School of Journalism and Mass Media. Welcome to Inside the Vandals. I'm Braden Kane. And I'm Harrison Lashinger. Big weekend in Vandals sports as it was homecoming weekend. The football team picking up a win right here in the Kibbe Dome. Vandals soccer finishing out the regular season. But we'll get to that a little bit later on in the show. Also, Idaho volleyball playing Idaho State tonight in another Battle of the Domes in Memorial Gymnasium. Should be an exciting game. Speaking of exciting, the Idaho Vandals played Southern Utah right here in the Kibbe Dome this past weekend. It was a sellout crowd. It was a great game. Let's take a look back. Welcome to Inside the Vandals. A huge win today for the Vandals right here in the Kibbe Dome for homecoming. The game was sold out, the atmosphere was electric, and the Vandals were able to come out with the victory 31-12 over Southern Utah University. Catrell Haywood had an absolutely stellar performance, catching seven passes for 71 yards and three touchdowns. Quarterback Mason Petrino had a day as well, going 19 for 23, throwing for 161 yards and three touchdowns. Running backs Isaiah Saunders and Tyrese Walker were the dynamic duo today, having 199 rushing yards combined, and Saunders ran in a touchdown. The Vandals will travel to Cheney, Washington next weekend to take on the Eastern Washington Eagles, who are 5-2. I think we've got to come out of the blocks fast. Um, we've got to be ready to play. Play good early, because um, we can't let them jump out to a big lead and try to make us one-dimensional. So we've we got to do a really good job early of playing well. Idaho will need to find a way to stop running back Sam McPherson, who is averaging 8.8 .8 yards per carry and already has eight touchdowns. They will also need to put pressure on quarterback Gabe Gublud, who has missed the last two games and already has 13 touchdowns. The Vandals' defense will have a tough matchup this weekend, and will need to perform on the Inferno for the Vandals to come out with the victory. For Inside the Vandals, I'm Harrison Lasher. As we saw, great game for us against Southern Utah this weekend. This upcoming weekend, traveling to Cheney, playing on the red field. Eastern Washington's a great team. It's gonna be a great game to watch. Should be a great game, a rivalry game as well. Also, earlier this week, we had Big Sky Media Day for the basketball seasons coming up. Let's take a closer look at that. With Big Sky Media Day happening earlier this week, Vandal basketball inches closer and closer to the start of their seasons. Both teams finished second in the Big Sky last season and look to repeat their previous success coming into this year. For the men, a lot of new faces joining the team after losing five seniors from last year. But according to head coach Don Berlin, that won't change his approach coming into this season. There's not going to be any change. The system's been pretty good. Uh, for a long time. Oh, I know it's going to be definitely a work in progress, uh, no, no question about it. With 10 freshmen and sophomores, uh, you know, our returning guys, um, Trayvon Allen's going to have to play very well. Uh, he's got to be our leader. Scott Blakeney, uh, who played some last year. Juno West, who also played a little bit last year. But obviously it's a whole new look for the Vandals. I'm excited about it. They're good young players. They, they, they want to learn. They want to be coached. And, and what we're going to have to do is just get better every day. And for the women, an almost completely opposite story returning a lot of key players, including the dynamic duo of Taylor Pierce and Big Sky preseason MVP, Michaela Ferenz. Expectations are high coming into this season, looking to return to the NCAA tournament. Well, I think most of their expectations are, are team-oriented. You know, uh, individually, they've done so many things and set so many records, uh, NCAA records, Idaho records, and I think right now, their big focus is to get, uh, get the Vandals back in the big dance like they were, uh, when we were when they were freshmen. You can catch the women in action for the first time this season, this Sunday when they face St. Martins for an exhibition game, and also see both teams match up against Lewis and Clark State College for an exhibition game on November 2nd in Memorial Gymnasium. For Inside the Vandals, I'm Braden Kane. The all new 2019 Subaru Ascent is amazing. Pull a camper up to 5,000 pounds with 260 horsepower, 2.4 liter turbocharged engine, seating for up to eight people, standard with eyesight, 19 cup holders, 
Now you can do all this in a Subaru. Tour our large selection of pre-owned Subarus during the Subaru Love Strikes Twice certified pre-owned event now through October 31st. Roger Subaru, we care about what you're driving. Zach Kellogg and Jonah Baker have been joining us all season covering soccer and volleyball. They're going to take a closer look at the soccer team as they just finished up their regular season. And they're also going to be looking at volleyball as they take on Idaho State tonight in the Mem Gym. Battle of the Domes, they join us now. Thanks guys. And Zach, Idaho soccer pulled off a draw against Northern Arizona to finish out the regular season. How do Coach Clevenger and the rest of the team feel about that result? So they got the two seed going into the Big Sky Tournament. A little bit disappointed because they had the chance to get the one seed and take all the momentum into the Big Sky Tournament. I had the chance to talk with Coach Clevenger about the Big Sky regular season, the momentum they're taking into the postseason, and their goal is to try and get a Big Sky championship. Idaho soccer head coach Jeremy Clevenger, Coach Clevenger, finishing up the regular season. What are the takeaways you guys had from this final weekend and also the feeling of getting the two seed going into the tournament? Yeah, I mean, we finished off on a, on a high note. Um, you know, I think finishing um, October without conceding goal, uh, finishing the number two seed, um, playing very well uh, defensively and on the tack. Um, very happy on, on the way we finished. Now it's just a matter of just kind of keeping that uh, momentum going uh, into the playoffs. Um, we do have a first round bye, so just got to keep focused and um, prepare for that Friday matchup. And touching on the offense, we've been talking a lot about how great the defense is playing this year, but my Marino is actually tied for first place with five goals in conference play. Can you kind of touch on how she's been performing this year in the offense in general? Yeah, uh, you know, first of all, Maya's been amazing. She is um, tough to deal up there. Up there, uh, she's fast. She's quick. She her first touch and explosion uh, is is first class, and, and that's I think that's why she's gotten so many goals. I think she's learned how to score in different ways. I don't think she's scoring in just one manner. Um, which is which makes her dangerous, but uh, the whole attack has been been. Uh, I think we have different pieces. We don't have, um, I think, one player that uh, just is always going to get this goal. Even though Maya's are kind of our target, um, I think there's other goals from other players. Um, so it makes us tough to deal with on different teams. They can't just hone in on Maya, um, you know. And we've been getting some 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 great um, great play from our midfield. I gotta give midfield credit. You know they're. They've been giving some some great balls that are kind of their ankle or anchor going forward and kind of getting us uh, moving the ball in different areas. So very happy with with the forwards and the midfield right now in our attack. And coach, going in and having a bye week, how are you guys getting prepared for Northern Colorado or possibly Eastern Washington? Yeah, I, I think it's just uh, you know using this time to rest up, use it to recover, um, but also you know I just want to stay sharp this week. Um, you know the message of the team is is to you know um, come to training prepared, mentally ready, um, intense practices. And then we'll just see where, where we fall um, with uh, Northern Colorado or, or Eastern Washington, both will be tough opponents. Um, but it's about us and uh, our preparation this week and staying sharp. All right, thank you, Coach. Best of luck to you at the tournament. Idaho Soccer having the two seed do get a first round by. They'll play Friday, November 2nd. Either way, it'll be a very exciting game, plus it's postseason. Anything that can happen, you got to be prepared. And when we return here at Inside the Vandals, we'll hear from a very special player from the Idaho volleyball team who brings a ton of talent and tenacity to the volleyball squad. And we'll also get a few words from head coach Debbie Buchanan as the team heads into the last leg of their season. Last year, they played for the conference championship and came so close. This year, they're back and ready to finish. Join Idaho women's basketball on their 2019 journey to a Big Sky title. Don't miss 14 home games, including a challenging 10-game conference schedule. Season tickets start at just $60. Get yours today at GoVandals.com. 18-19 Vandal women's basketball, ready to finish. As one of Idaho's leaders on the front line, Devon Ryder has been a force to be reckoned with this season on a team with high expectations. From the get-go, we were predetermined to be um, first in the conference. So it was just this really high standard to kind of go into the season with. And as seniors, we all just kind of came together and, and realized that, I mean, this is, this is the year to do it, you know. I mean, we've, we've been here for four or five years, and. Um, haven't quite clinched that, that winning title, so like this is the year to do it. Ryder has grown each season in Moscow, making the All Big Sky second team last year while leading Idaho in hitting percentage. 
That trend has continued into this season with more growth on the horizon. Last year was one of my better years, my junior year. Um, so it was a lot to live up to this year and I, I think that um, in this season I have done really well with trying not to compare to last season um, because now people, people know about me, I, I did a little bit better, I have a target on my back in a way. Um, so I haven't been doing too, like as statistically, as good as last year, but with that like I just have to continue to uh, be mentally locked in and um, just continue being positive and playing for my team and knowing that this is a team sport, not a personal sport. Last year's team made it to the Big Sky semifinals but fell short to eventual champions North Dakota. With an experienced squad and multiple role players, this year's Vandals are primed for another deep tournament run. Yeah, so when we went to the Big Sky tournament last year, I, I feel like we almost felt intimidated by North Dakota, like they were the team to beat. Um, and I think this year, I, our team has a lot more confidence instilled in us. So I think the biggest change um, from last year's conference tournament to us potentially going to this year's tournament is that we, I mean, we have that confidence. It's not, it's not a sense of cockiness. It's not a sense of entitlement. It's just that, that confidence in knowing that we trust one another and we are going to go for every ball and we're going to do everything we can to win and ultimately take that, that title. Ryder and the Vandals are going into the second half of Big Sky play against Idaho State and Weber State to finish out the current homestand with more exciting volleyball to come. For Inside the Vandals, I'm Jonah Baker. Jonah, great piece right there on Devon Ryder. Yeah, and she does so much for this team as far as the chemistry goes, and they've really made a lot of strides, especially in the middle of that defense as we've gotten towards the end of the season. And I had a chance to talk with head coach W. Buchanan about what Ryder specifically brings to the team, as well as what the rest of the team wants to accomplish as they head into the rest of the season. Welcome back to Inside the Vandals. I'm joined here today with head coach W. Buchanan. And coach, uh, we just got out of a segment with Devon Ryder. Um, what exactly does she, one of those key seniors, really bring to this team? You know, Devon, I think, is uh, obviously a key part to what we're doing. Um, most teams are really trying to key in on her, so uh, she's opening that um, gap for the outside hitters, or if they're committing to the outside, she's up and ready and really being able to create some offense. So, you know, she's fast, she's explosive, and, you know, she's definitely pulling, you know, and helping our offense in one way and another. Right, and then coming into this weekend's matchups with Idaho State and Weber State, they were you guys' last two conference losses a long time ago. Um, what kind of adjustments have you and the team made to make sure that there is a moving f movement forward with these new next two matches? You know, I think we've just really continued to develop as a team. You know, um, that was, wasn't was a great week for us. Um, we're, I think, a better offensive team. Uh, I think we're more balanced. I think we've gotten better defensively as well. Right, so it kind of sounds like you guys have made a lot of the adjustments that you need to so far in the season. Um, with just a little bit left before the Big Sky Tournament, um, is there anything else this team needs to do to make sure they're in the best possible place to be ready to um, get up to their maximum potential? I think the biggest thing is the willingness to learn. You know, we talked about that today. We've got eight matches left. Um, it's kind of crazy. We only have eight morning practices, and then we'll have some afternoon. We're less than three weeks away. You know, we're, it's, it's coming down pretty quick. Um, you know, every day we have to come in with the mentality that we're going to outwork our opponents. And if we can do that and the willingness to learn and to keep getting better, then I think we're going to put ourselves in a really good spot. Um, they know we talk about it one match at a time. You know, we're not even looking at the conference tournament right now. We know it's around the corner, but these are really important matches, you know, and so we really can't look past anybody right now um, one match at a time. And, um, you know, we're making little adjustments per team that we play. But really, it's about us, and can we play consistent? Coach, best of luck this upcoming weekend in these next two conference games. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Coach. Right. And Idaho State coming into town for the annual Battle of the Domes rivalry match. What can you tell us about it? Well, Idaho State's lost their last two matches in their last home stand in Pocatello, whereas Idaho, obviously on the other side, has won a ton coming into this upcoming matchup. However, both teams play very similarly at the net, so we should see a lot of interesting volleyball coming up tonight. We're both really excited for that matchup. We actually got to run over to Memorial Gym to call the game. For Jonah Baker, I'm Zach Kellogg. We'll see you all next time.